You are not the first to pass this way, nor shall you be the last. His robotic army is stealing crystallic fusion power cells. Please remain seated during the trip and no smoking, please. Nous partirons prochainement à bord du monorail local de Walt Disney World. Maglev Express Service to Mesa Verde leaves every 30 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to clap your paws, stomp your hooves, and ruffle your feathers as we welcome you to the W Radio. Your information station. Welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. This is show number 76 for the week of July 20th, 2008. I'm your host, Lou Mangiello, bringing you a little bit of Disney magic each and every week in a fun, family-friendly show. Because of the Magic Meet event this weekend, I'm leaving early so I won't be able to cover any news or rumors this week, but I do have a segment and an announcement that I think you're going to enjoy. Walt Disney World isn't just the world's number one vacation destination, it's also one of the most desirable places to work. And for thousands of college students every year, it's home to a classroom unlike any other. The Walt Disney World College Program offers an opportunity for students to work and learn in a program that will forever change their lives. To discuss the program in more detail, I welcome in Christy Breen, the Director of Segment College and International Program Recruitment, to answer many of the questions that students and parents may have. Then, to give a perspective from a recent college program graduate, Catherine Farmer joins me. Now a professional intern for Walt Disney World, she recounts her experiences in the program and the effects that it's had on her both personally and professionally. Before playing some of your voicemails at the end of the show, specifically about the recent Top 10 Smells segment, I have one more announcement to make this week about an exciting new project and product. And once again, Tim Foster is going to join me to introduce you to something we've been working on for some time that I think you're really going to enjoy. So sit back Relax and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. Each year, thousands of students come to Walt Disney World not as guests on spring break or vacation with their families, but to be a part of the Walt Disney World cast in one of the nation's largest and undoubtedly most prestigious internships. And as part of the Walt Disney World College program, students get to live, work, and yes, play in a classroom unlike any other. And to tell us more, I want to welcome in Christy Breen. She is the director of the Segment College and International Program's College and International Recruitment for Disney Worldwide Services. Christy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I wanted to invite you on to the show to discuss the program and not just educate people about it, um, but also students maybe of or or, and parents of students that might be interested and also really for personal reasons because this is something that I so regret not doing when I was... uh, when I was back in college oh so many years ago. (laughs) We have heard that frequently, so you're not the only one. Can you tell us um, maybe a little bit about yourself first? Absolutely. Um, I actually began with the company um, quite some time ago, so I will tell you almost 17 years ago, on the program very, very similar to this. So when I was at the university, saw posters and flyers and actually came and interviewed. So right out of college, I came down to Walt Disney World, uh, began one of our resorts, and literally just have made my way through um, the company in various positions. And I think that was such an important uh, aspect of joining this company is I was an international affairs major, emphasis in Western Europe. Um, I had heard about this new project opening in France, which intrigued me. So I began here and, you know, six months later had an opportunity to um, go to France and spend six or seven months opening up Euro Disney at the time, now Disneyland Paris. Um, came back here and I became a salary leader in food and beverage, worked in various um, of our resorts. And then really got into HR. This is where my passion was because it's how I started with the company. So I became a college recruiter, a team leader, a manager, and now the director of our college and our international programs both here and in California. 
you, you actually are speaking to a point that we'll touch on later on, which is the opportunities that this college program opens up for students. And you said you started a couple of years ago, and the program's been around since around 81 or so? 27 years right now. Very proud of that. Excellent. Tell us um, how Disney goes about finding students to participate in the program. You know, it's unique. We have some key partner schools, um, actually about 300, where the team of recruiters goes on campus and has the opportunity to present the program. We feel it's very, very important because it is a unique internship. It is a three component, a living, learning, and earning academic internship. So um, we do feel it's important that students view a presentation. They can do that online at their convenience or live at a, at a presentation with us. Um, after the presentation, then they, they sign up for interviews. Um, upon completion of the interview, then a decision is made whether they will join us. So you talked about the, the 300 colleges across the country. Mm-hmm. What if your college doesn't participate? Well, that's fine. You know, we have students here representing over 1,200 different colleges, and and we just can't go to every school. So we invite any student who's interested. They can go on our website, um, look at when we're going to visit those 300 schools. They're more than welcome to to visit the school at their convenience when the presentation is going on. Or, as I mentioned, we have an online technology. So we have an e-presentation where students at their convenience can go and view the, the online presentation and then follow the next steps, which was to call for an interview and be scheduled for a on, um, on you know telephone interview. So you shouldn't, or actually, you really can't come down and knock on the door of Disney and say, "I'm a college student and I want, I want to be part of the college program." Not for the college program. For other employment opportunities at Disney, yes, but for the college program, you do need to go through the process. You talked a little bit about the application process and the interview process. Tell us a little more, you know, really what happens. You go through the presentation either at the school or maybe online. You submit your application. Do you get do you do you sit by the phone and wait for that phone call? It is really very easy. So it just depends. Again, you can either do an in-person um, interview at campus with one of our recruiters if that's more comfortable for you, or again, if you view the online presentation, contact you. There's a one eight hundred number that you call. You schedule yourself for an interview, and then at your convenience. So I will tell you some of our most popular interview times for our students are Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings at 11 or 12 at night. So whenever is convenient for them, um, we are we interview really almost all the time. But that interview, you know, could take 30 minutes, and then within two weeks or so, a, a student will know whether or not they have an offer for the college program. And are there any sort of prerequisites for being in college? Is, is there age uh, restrictions or limitations? Must you be a matriculating student? The only requirement, you've, you must be enrolled in a college or university. It can be a two-year, four-year technical school. That's fine. All majors are welcome. Um, you need to at least be 18, minimum of 18 years old when you come down in the program um, because, again, I mentioned it's a living, learning, earning opportunity, and part of the living is actually we provide fully furnished housing. So that is really the only requirement. Um, But we've had students, again, all majors, all ages, and and really all are welcome. All right. So the lawyer in me is thinking, so if I want to go back to my community college and take a class, I'm technically in college, but that's probably not. Absolutely. You would be more than welcome. Again, if you're a minimum of 18, any major, and you're enrolled in school, we would love for you to interview. And you saw my eyes light up when you said that. I actually, you're more than welcome. At almost 40, I might be part of the college program, so I might be seeing you again soon. That'd be great. Um, This, I got to imagine, is such a highly sought after internships. And you said there's 300 students, and I know there's probably thousands of students that you accept. How many students apply, and maybe how many students do you, you take each year? You know, it really depends. We have various programs, so students can arrive. We have five-month or seven-month programs. Students can arrive in January, May, or August. Typically, we work around their schedule, their school schedule. Um, And we, what I really mentioned, we had 300 kind of host sites that we go to. We will bring in, you know, depending on quality is really what we're looking for. So students that are enthusiastic, that really want to, you know, have exposure with our guests and make a difference for our guests, those are the kinds of students that we're looking for. So at any time, you know, we can bring down between three and 4,000 students, um, domestic college students, but you know, clearly are not able to offer everyone a role. So we are looking for the you know, strong quality of hire that, that really will, will be successful in the program. You mentioned the three times a year that, that the programs really start. Uh, is there anything maybe like a summer-only college internship or does it actually go into the 
course, yeah. You know, we do not have a summer only, except for some of our returning alumni. We have a very strong alumni base, as you can imagine. In fact, after 27 years, we are going to welcome our 100,000th student um, this year, which is significant for us. But we really, because it is an academic internship and students take courses or have the opportunity to take courses when they're here, three months just is not long enough for them to come, get acclimated with the culture, and, and be able to really make a difference. So that minimum is five months. Okay, so you, you get the call, you have your interview, and you're hired. What, what happens on day one? Are you like a regular cast member? Do you go through t- traditions and the whole process? Absolutely. Um, I think your life changes when you arrive. But we have a great process, an arrival process, specifically for our participants. So students, arriving students, are assigned a specific day. We don't want them just arriving whenever because we truly do have a, a structured process for them um, to welcome them appropriately to the company. So they actually arrive at one of our housing complexes. We have a welcome center that's set up for them and very structured so they know exactly what they're going to do. Um, lots of, of paperwork and, and arriving and getting into their accommodations, meeting their roommates. We have a huge kind of pizza po- pool party on that day one, um, which is very important for us just to, to begin again to get acclimated to this new program. And then we share with them what happens. So typically on day three is when they'll go through their first day of traditions, which is their official kind of first day of work. And when students are brought in, um, you know, obviously, some are looking for the the Disney experience. Some are looking for real world experience. What are some of the different roles uh, in the cast that the college program students can take? Yeah, they can fill any one of our frontline positions in our resorts, our water parks, um, in our theme parks. So things like merchandise, attractions, food and beverage, um, custodial really front desk, concierge, so lots of positions. Um, You know, it really is based on, we look at someone's background, what they've done before, but the experience that they get on the program is really doesn't matter. They're going to be at a front desk location or a food and beverage location. The experience at the end of this internship will be the same. It is that high guest contact. It's the transferable skills that, that is so important to us, and that's what we hear from our students, that they've learned how to problem solve, their communication skills just... Um, you know, soar because they really are, are faced with thousands of guests all the time and, and they're, you know, the point person for them. So when a student comes in, uh, either it's, does it happen beforehand or, that, or the day that they come in for sort of their orientation, are they assigned a role or are there specific areas that they say, well, I'd really like to work in such and such? Mm-hmm. That would happen during the interview process. So we really talk with them about, you know, do you have a, an area or several areas that you're interested in? And we'll talk about that. So when they're offered a position on the college program, they're also offered a specific line of business. They don't know where they'll be placed. That happens kind of on their day two when they arrive. But they know what they're going to be doing. And what happens, I have to ask, if on day two somebody comes in and they've been assigned to, to roll X and it's just not for them and they think, well, this is not how I want to spend it. This is not what I'm looking to get out of the program. You know, it's again, they'll know what role they're going to be in before they come down. So, for instance, if someone is, is assigned a merchandise role, they know that when they come down. Now, we will have students that say, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to be at the Grand Floridian Resort versus I'm going to be at the Magic Kingdom. And I really thought I'd be at the Magic Kingdom. And, you know, if we can make that happen, we, we do. We, we try to place them where they'd want to be. Otherwise, we say, you know what, start. Because a lot of times when a student then starts their role, they'll come back to us and say, this is great. Like, I didn't know <laughs> that, that, that this resort was going to be so beautiful or that I'll have such high interaction with the guests. So we really do encourage the students to try it. And I think, you know, that's such a key to this program is they are here for a pretty short period of time, whether that's five months or seven months, and we ask that they really be flexible. Flexible with new roommates, new culture, their new work environment, new leadership, their classes are different, their, you know, time management, and it's the most successful students are those that really say, I'll just try it. I'm going to try it and I'll ask questions, but, but I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of, you know, bend a little bit and be flexible and, and just take this all on as a true experience. And that's really one of the benefits because I'm, I'm sure that no college program cast member has ever retired off of what they've made dollar-wise because they do get paid for their internships. Right. But that's not the point. It's not the benefit isn't derived from the dollars that are earned, but from the experience itself. That's absolutely correct. And, you know, even in the presentation that is either online or on campus, we really say this internship is what you make of it. So we do have students who, you know, they go to work and they do well and they learn, and, and I think that they go home, a, you know, a, a better person that has developed great skills. We also have a lot of individuals that come down and they network and they meet people and they partake in the classes and the community events and 
it just changes their life. So it truly is. It, like life in general, it's what you put into it. It's what you're going to get out of it. And in addition to the experience of working and, you know, for some people, the Magic Kingdom being your office every day, uh, there's also a number of courses that students can take as well for college credit to enhance the education. Absolutely. And, you know, this was really important to our program. In 2000, we went to the American Council on Education, um, and we have put forth a number of courses. So they have actually reviewed all their curriculum and said this meets the rigors of a college or university course. So lower and upper division, um, we have eight different courses, actually three brand new ones that we just introduced about six months ago. But, you know, 55 or 56 percent of our students actually are getting credit for the program, and many are just swapping out courses. So whatever domestic school they go to, instead of taking um, organizational leadership on their campus, they take it with us, and that, that um, credit just transfers. So that was a really important part of the, the program for us and a huge step when we could get that recommended for credit. And from a person who wished they would have done it before, the course that are offered is a big part of the appeal because you're not taking calculus and physics, you're taking experiential learning for the 21st century, hospitality management, uh, organizational leadership, you know, things that Disney, if you're going to learn these from anybody, this is the place to come. Right, right. And, you know, we've tried to look at what our core competencies are as an organization. So, you know, other ones offered uh, creativity and innovation is a new one of ours. Corporate communication was a new one. And then we also have created, so those are very structured. Those are more textbooks. They meet once a week. There is, you know, there are homework and, and papers and things that are associated with that. For those students who might be coming down, though, and saying, you know what, I don't know if I want to do all of that, but I really do want to do some learning, but maybe not as structured. Then we've put together something called the Disney Exploration Series. So we call it the DES program, which this is really a, a phenomenal opportunity for students who want to understand maybe communication or human resources um, or leadership, but not in maybe textbook, but even more so of how Disney does it. So we really take these students out into what we call our learning laboratory. So for instance, the human resources we bring here to casting. And we show them and we bring them out of the classroom and we walk them through casting. And we say, here's how people get hired here. And let's talk you through what that looks like. Or we take them to the command center at the Magic Kingdom. So when we say we have hurricanes that come and we evacuate the parks, how do we do that? How do we do that for our for our guests? So it is a very hands-on learning. Many of these are taught by our leaders within the company, which also shows, I think, a huge dedication that our leadership team has across property for this program. Now, with being able to take courses as well as work, how are they able to balance it? You know, how many, maybe on an average, how many hours a week would a student work? Our, and, you know, here's where time management does come into play. So a lot of students will tell us at the end that they are much better at how they do their schedules and their planning than they were when they started on the program. Students are guaranteed here a minimum of 30 hours. And that's important to us um, because we want to make sure that they do have enough that they can um, pay their rent and, and still have money to live every week. But they are, and they're, they're maxed at 45 hours. So it is important for us that we work very closely with our scheduling team to work around their classes. So students that are taking classes first get scheduled around their classes, and then they, they you know, are scheduled for the rest of their work shifts. And what about the... Um where do the students live? You know, where do they come to actually stay? Is, are they responsible for finding their own housing, or is that something you help them out with? Yeah. You know, I think another <laughs> unique component of this program, and, and really what we just don't find anywhere else, is we don't ask students to go, you know, find a place in Orlando that you think you'd like to live, and, oh, yeah, by the way, then you'll have to do this lease and your deposits and find roommates and, you know, the place not might not be furnished. We take care of all of that for our students, which um, I think is, again, another component where students will take and, and talk and talk and talk and remain in contact with their roommates um, for a long period of time. We have um, actually just opened up our fourth apartment complex. Um, these are specifically for our participants. So any of our college or in our international program students live together. Um, fully furnished units, um, gated 
you know, entrance, uh, tons and tons of activities, events. We have transportation that's provided for all of our participants, so to and from work. So really a student just has to get themselves down here. Once that's there, they show their ID and they get on buses and it takes them everywhere they need to go. Um, we take them to the grocery store. We take them to the to the mall. Um, it, it is, we have beach trips scheduled. I mentioned the pool parties. We have activities. We have a, a grocery bingo, which is a huge success for our students. And, and you know, winners take bags of groceries back to their apartments. And we might have 600 people playing bingo. <laughs> so those are some of the things. But I, gen, I think they, you know, they have an opportunity, especially with some of our growth of our international um, programs, to live with students from all over the country and all over the world. And that's what you really hear from these students as well is, gosh, you know, now either I'm going to go visit and I don't have to pay for hotels because I have roommates, you know, that now live in New York and California and Japan and um, France and Norway. So it is really broadened, I think, their horizons and just the, the diversity that they have um, exposure to. Well, you bring up another point because the, the college program really is for U.S. schools and, and U.S. students, but there are opportunities for people internationally to come as well. Absolutely there are, and, and actually just growth and growth for our international students. So students who are already studying here in the United States um, on an F-1 visa or specific visas can participate on the college program. We also have a J-1 academic program where s- really international students from um, around the world can come, and they actually are sponsored by a visa through the domestic school, and then they can spend, you know, up to a year with us. I have to talk about there, there's. We talk about some of the benefits and and some of the uh, things that students will take with them. But there are a lot of perks for working. The, not the least of which is free admission to the parks while you're here. <laughs> Absolutely, there's perks. And, you know, we can't forget that because that's really what makes this this Disney difference for, for the cast members. So um, they take their ID, which has a tremendous amount of, of power with them, and they can <laughs> go into the parks. And they there's lots of also special previews that we do. So any of our new attractions that open up or new resorts that might open up, we, we have cast previews. And it just makes you very proud of, of having the ID. And, you know, it's all also kind of anywhere you go in Orlando that you pull out your ID because you typically are given also discounts at many other places within Central Florida. And you, you mentioned briefly, you alluded to before, that you can do the college program more than once during your college tenure. After that six-month program is over, you can come back? You can come back. You know, and we, we have some students that actually extend with us so they can stay up to a year. The one thing we really say to students is we are not going anywhere. So education for us is very important. We want them to return and get their, their education and graduate because then they come back with us. We actually have lots of progressional opportunities for them. So a student can come down and do a second college program, absolutely. Many, many start their program during their first semester of their sophomore year and then return when they're juniors or seniors. Many can come back in what we refer to as professional internships. So we bring in about 600 students or so into professional internship roles, and that can be even more um, more aligned with their major. So we have them, you know, anywhere from our Disney's Animal Kingdom, so in animal sciences, to Epcot, to human resources and marketing and finance. And and really, that is a huge stepping stone into areas that they may want to go into when they're done with school and here. Right. And clearly, before anybody applies, they need to kind of be sure that it's right for them because there's a job first and foremost. But what are some of your best tips for somebody who wants to apply and be hired as part of the college program? You know, I think I mentioned a little bit, it is, it's that flexibility um, of them. It's someone who really wants to learn something new. I think someone who um, wants to uh, wants to step out of their box and, and may be uncomfortable for a little bit. And, and that's, we tell students, you know, you are going to come down here and, and it can be a little bit scary because it is a new new state, a new environment. You'll have new roommates. And we have so many resources there here for students, though, that, you know, to seek out if you have questions. And, you know, our alumni network, it's what's so important. And, and we find that when students can kind of reach out and meet others who have done this program, and that's where it's really what's successful. So, again, I think someone who just wants to improve themselves, improve their communication skills. People like to be around other people. I think they will be the most successful in the program. What are some of your kind of personal fondest memories of being part of the program? Oh. Oh, see, we're going to have to stay here for another five hours for me to for me to say things. You know, I think the the things that always stay in mind is, um, and it's why we are here, and I think it's why we're cast members is, it is just helping the guests. So literally, it is kind of those experiences that stand out to me. 
um, where I was able to do something, and it's because of my actions that literally the guest would say to me, that was awesome, or you made my whole trip, you know, or my, my son or daughter will never forget that you just did that. And, you know, sometimes it's small things, but we really are, and, and we tell this to our cast members, we empower them to make a difference for our guests. So, again, small things, but someone drops their ice cream or their balloon flies away. You know what? Go get another one. Don't ask. Get something and fix the situation. And it usually is that instant guest recovery that will, you know, it can change this this whole perception that the guests have and those comments usually are again the ones that really stay with me on wow you know it's that small thing that I did and, and they it, it you know they remember it years from now and it's so funny because your comments really mirror those that I've spoken to who are veterans of the program who all say that they're they leave here you know, I hate to use the, the, the cliche that they're almost able to take a little piece of that magic with them. And they do go back to school. They do go out into the real world as a changed person. Yeah. You know, it is so true. We actually have um, campus reps, and it is really because of that reason. So we invite our alumni to come back on campus when we're on campus and we're at the presentation because we want them to come up and talk with other prospective students, share their experience. You know, I, I can tell them everything, but I'm a little older than they are. So typically when a peer gets up and can share their experience that's that's where they you see the nods on the on the you know students they get it that so we invite them to come back with that we have a campus rep program so alumni from the college program who are returning back to campus and want to just stay connected with us they want to help us on campus they want to go and and talk to some of their classes and or in clubs and organizations about their experience on the college program um, we have about 1300 right now around the country um, just that they got a bug right they want to kind of stay connected with the recruiter and they want to share their experiences and and that clearly happens and you know it's interesting now I travel a bit more internationally and I will be at a hotel uh, you know in China or in uh, Italy and I I always run into somebody who has done the program or they'll see my logo and they'll say oh my gosh that's the college program I did that you know 15 years ago 20 years ago or or now we're getting to the point of you know my daughter now is on that program or I've done the international program and here's what it's done for me and you know you just hear those stories over and over and over again of if they didn't choose to stay with the Disney company um, you always hear that the Disney company name opened up doors for them so having it on their resume and then it allowed them, you know, it allowed them at least to get into the interview so that they could talk about themselves and what they have to offer. And that's exactly what I was going to say. There's really a short-term and a long-term value because I think when interviewers see it on the resume, the Disney name carries such weight yeah. because of the reputation for customer service and what they can bring. And no matter what, no matter what role you've been in on the college program, I have to just think that it'll help you going out into the real world when you're trying to get that next, you know, full-time position. Like I said, whether with, it's with the company or not. Absolutely, it does. And I think, you know, we talked about transferable skills. We just have seen, you know, people grow so much. In fact, I remember specifically a couple individuals that I interviewed and, oh, my goodness, it's college, and their, their necks would turn red, and they were shaking, and they could hardly look at me. And I thought, but you know what? They just have such potential. They have such passion for doing this. They want to. You know, they're just very tentative. I would see them, you know, a year later back on campus. So they had an opportunity to come do the program for six months, go back on campus, hardly recognize them. So would stand up. Now they have this confidence level, a maturity level, much more focused. They typically better understand what they want to do. A lot of people define their major once they've done the program because they've had an opportunity not only to learn about themselves, but I think talk to a lot of the other participants on the program. And I'd have a student who would stand up and literally, they just out of their box and talking, and I'd think, where did this person come from? But so clearly it does change them. Absolutely. And it truly is a unique opportunity that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, for more information, whether you're a student or a parent, you can go to DisneyCollegeProgram.com. There's also a phone number on the website that you can go and, and talk to somebody. You can apply online. And for maybe if you want to come to the company and don't want to have to go back to school, you can visit DisneyCareers.com uh, if you want to come down. Christy, thanks so much for sharing your experience and uh, tell us a little bit about what the college program entails. You're more than welcome. It was just a pleasure.
So in talking about the college program, I thought it would be great if we actually spoke to somebody who not only took part in it, but took part in it recently and has now come back and is continuing her experience with the company. And I'm sitting with Catherine Farmer. She is a recent graduate, and now she's currently a professional intern. Catherine, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about what college you went to and when you were part of the college program. Okay, well, I'm originally from Texas, and I graduated from Texas Tech University, and I came down in the Fall Advantage program for the Disney College program, Fall of 2007, and um, I was an Epcot vacation planner. So worked out of Epcot, um, did the ticket sales up front, um, got to talk with people from all over the world, and really interact with families and guests. Um, on a very personal level, I was planning their vacation, so you know, got to ask them the questions. What do you want to do? What is your family like? Are you a roller coaster family or are you more of a show type family? So, I'm um, a really great experience uh, working at Epcot. Um, I love all the countries in the back, so just a really positive experience. Excellent. Let's go back to uh, 2007, and how did you how did you come to learn about the college program? Were you always a Disney fan, or did you happen to see something up in your community center? Sure. Um, my older sister did the Disney College program, so I learned about it from her. Um, actually, my family had never come to Disney until 2000, so I was in oh, high school. The humanity. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was a late bloomer uh, with my Disney love, so I didn't actually arrive here until 2000. My sister did the college program. I came down here to visit her on her college program experience. She was over at Kilimanjaro Safaris. And I thought, I want to do this, too. You know, why can't I do it? So the recruiters came to my campus, and I thought, why not? Um, I had just graduated in May, and instead of, you know, getting that official real job, I thought, I want to go down and work for Disney and see what path it can take me down, you know, down in Florida. So you actually were able to do the college program, I didn't even think about this, after you gra- right after you graduated. Right. The only requirement is you have to currently be in school when you apply. So I was in school when I applied. I graduated in May, and then I came right down afterwards. So. And originally, sort of what were your expectations? What were you thinking the college program was going to bring to you? Was it the experience? Was it the you know long-term goal of being on a resume? Was it, uh, you know... Th- the great pay and, and or was it just being able to play in the Magic Kingdom every day? Well, I think it was a combination of all. Um, like I said, I had not come to the parks until about 2000. So, you know, I still had that itch of wanting to go and explore that whole fascination of what happens backstage. You know, we get to kind of see the secrets and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I thought I get to meet people from all across the country, people who are my age. Um, you know, I was concerned that I just graduated. What am I doing down here? You know, why didn't I go into the real world type of thing? But as soon as I got down here, I I could see the benefit of having Disney on your resume for my future. I definitely wanted to stay with the company. Um, So, you know, I thought what a great start to, you know, start off in the parks and kind of see how the parks work, how they they really do um, all come together, all the cast members from all the parks and all the resorts. Um, Being in vacation planning, I definitely learned about every single park. You know, you have that just general knowledge of everything. So my initial, you know, expectations of coming down here was to learn, to meet new people, um, just kind of really get that great Disney whole experience, you know. Right. I know for a lot of people who might be thinking about applying, probably the scariest aspect for them is is that an in initial interview. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people, especially if, you, if you're in college, you've probably never been through it before mm-hmm. in that level. But from what I understand from talking to other people, it's not the big, scary boardroom type thing. Tell us about what the interview process was like. Sure. They ask you kind of general questions about guest service. So, you know, in a previous job, what experiences have you had, um, you know, with a guest situation. So they might ask, you know, if if a guest approached you um, on Main Street Magic Kingdom, you know, and they dropped their ice cream, what would you do as an individual to help kind of recover that situation? You know, would you offer another free ice cream? Would you get a leader to help you? Um, A lot of the questions during the interview are geared towards, you know, guests, our guest service basics. And what are you going to do? How are you going to react in that situation? Um, You know, during my interview, I just tried to be upbeat and positive, express my enthusiasm for the program, for the company, you know, meeting other students down here. Um, It really is not scary. It's not intimidating whatsoever as long as you are personable and you are yourself. And I think that comes across in your voice that you really do want to be down here on the college program. 
Okay, so you get the call, you get the email, whatever it is, that you're accepted to the college program, and the time comes, and, and mom and dad drop you off on the corner with your bag and say, good luck, Catherine. <laughs> right. Tell me about that first day, what that, what, what that was like. Well, I actually drove from Texas down here by myself, so that was kind of a big mm-hmm. step in itself. You know, I said goodbye to mom and dad in Texas, and I headed out <laughs> three days by myself um, getting here to Florida. So my initial reactions were, man, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I pulled up to the apartment complex where all the students um, check in, and I just remembered feeling I'm here. You know, there are signs and balloons everywhere, and I thought, this is really cool. Like, the next seven months are going to be amazing, you know? Um, Just kind of a big, fun party environment. There's a DJ with Disney music going on and balloons and food and water, and, you know, you kind of arrive, and you have that nervous, you know, okay, I'm standing next to someone I don't know. They could potentially be my roommate. Um, You know, you just want to tell everyone about where you're from and what your job's going to be and where you're going to work. Um, Just kind of this overwhelming excitement. Definitely overwhelming. (laughs) (laughs) And maybe you made reference to roommate. What was that part of the experience? You know, there's the on stage experience that we'll get to. But what about what was going on sort of off hours? Did you take classes? What was the um what was it like, you know, going through that door and getting your roommate for the first time? Mm-hmm. Well, I lived in a three bedroom apartment and every room had two girls in it. So there was a total of six of us. So that could be a little scary at first. <laughs> but um in all actuality it turned out to be fantastic. I still keep in contact with my roommates. Um a couple of them have been down here to visit me recently, so we still have that rapport with each other. Um, you know, we all work different hours of the day so it actually worked out perfectly my actual room roommate um, she worked the nights and I worked the days so it kind of flip-flopped um, you know there wasn't that it's my turn to get in the bathroom <laughs> that's the first thing I thought six girls in one apartment how many bathrooms I know there's only two bathrooms so we kind of had to create a schedule but like I said we all kind of worked around different hours and you know it really wasn't a, a bad deal we would cook dinner together um, I was down here for the holidays and you think oh gosh Thanksgiving and Christmas without your family how's it going to be all my roommates we all rallied together. We had a Christmas tree. You know, we were able to celebrate together. Um, it really was a positive experience in my, you know, my regard. Um, I still keep in contact with them today. So, and I'm sure there's lots of activities that go on for the college program people while they're here to, to keep you guys engaged. You know, oh, yeah. during your off hours. Right. And um, there are pool parties. There are special viewing events of movies. Um, of course, there's always free food. So <laughs> that's one thing to get college kids to come out, offer them free pizza, and you're there. Um, I, you talked earlier about courses. I did take an educational course. Um, so on my off days, I would, you know, dress up and go over to the classrooms. And, and it, it was a four-hour class that I did over there. Um, I wasn't getting credit for it because, like I said, I already graduated from college. But I like to learn. And, you know, I just wanted to see what other, you know, avenues that could take me down. So um, on my days off, which were Thursday and Friday, I always went to the beach as well. Um, you know, you can't not go to the beach. You're so close to, uh, you know, clear water right here. So um, that's what we did on our days off. We'd go play in the parks. We'd go to the beach. Um, we'd study for our class. <laughs> Just like being in college. <laughs> but again, your days off, you're spent, you know, in, in the parks here. Now, what about your actual role? Um, when you first were coming here, did you have something in mind you wanted to do? Was it sort of a front line being able to interact with the guests? Um, what did you want and what, and kind of how did that process go of, of your assignment? Sure. Well, during the interviews, um, they ask you your top three roles. And I was lucky enough to actually be placed as a vacation planner. That was my top choice. Um, I... I could see that this could help me down the road. I was going to be interacting with families and guests from all over the world, and I wanted to have that interaction. I wanted to be able to help plan and organize these families' vacations. And you'd be surprised how many people fly from a little tiny country across the world that I have no clue where it's at, and they come to Disney, and they say, I'm here, I've arrived, and you think, okay, what do you want to do? And so I had the opportunity to really listen to what people were telling me, kind of put it all together in this nice package and really give them something that their family would appreciate. They were able to kind of make the most of their vacation, get the most for their money, go to all the parks, through the water parks, Disney Quest, you know, everything down here. That's what I was most looking forward to, really having that interaction with the guests, you know, seeing a little girl with a happy birthday button on her chest, and then I say, come here, I've got a phone call from you, and then it's Goofy on the other line, um, you know, wishing her a happy birthday. You know, that was really fun to have that interaction with, you know, all ages of, of families, not just the little ones, but really the older ones as well. Excellent. And that seems to be something that 
you know, all the college program people have and all the Disney cast have, you all sort of treat guests the same way and you also have that same feeling about wanting to create that magic for them because you know how important this time is for the family that's coming down. Right. And being a vacation planner, we were in our, our little booth, so it was kind of a little bit more difficult to really get out there and have that, you know, physical interaction with the guests. You know, we're not on Main Street. We're not on, you know, somewhere out in the parks. Um, but we would have that interaction. It was more personal. They were telling us what their families enjoyed what they wanted to do and you know those little magical things that we could do like having Goofy on the phone or handing out those buttons those first visit buttons yeah. um, that was special to me that's what I really enjoyed and for you you said that you knew that you wanted to come back and work for the company so you saw an immediate benefit obviously from coming from the college program what about for other students or maybe other people that were when you're a group with you how do you think the college program helps them sort of long term real world wise well, I mean, having Disney on a resume, I don't think hurt anyone. <laughs> but um, long term, you are learning skills here that are not only, you know, making magic for guests, but you have that skill of communication, of responsibility, of prioritizing your tasks. You know, you might have someone who's, um, you know, in quick service or custodial, and they have to prioritize, okay, I need to do this first, second, and third, and it has to be done by 4 o'clock today. How are you going to go about getting all those things done? That translates into any type of job you're going to have in the future, whether it's, you know, with a business or a company. Um, you have to prioritize what you do with throughout your day. How's your day going to look like? Who are you going to come in contact with? If you have, you know, a guest situation, oh, they're not so happy, what are you going to do to resolve that? Those are all skills that can be transferred to any type of job that you have. And I think coming down the college program, you have a wide range of students. You have freshmen, you have seniors, you have graduates. You know, I think that for every college program student, they are at a different point in their life. And the experience they have down here really translates into whether they go back to school, whether they go on to another career. Um, I think they can take something away from the college program. All right, I'm going to ask you the hard question that I know you're going to say, well, I can't really pick one, but what do you think for you is, is maybe like your fondest memory, or most important part for you of the college program that maybe you took away from it? Oh, that's you a see? hard one. I know. <laughs> that's the hardest question. Um, it really is those little little things that I did for a family. Um, if it was, I could see a little girl who was upset. Well, hey there, princess. You know, why Why are you crying? And you really, you can, although you're handing them a button or you're handing them, you know, maybe a fast pass type of situation, you know, to get them faster onto their ride. Um, you know, that, that just kind of makes it more special. You know, throughout your whole entire day, you're kind of doing, you know, your tasks here and there. But to kind of stop and see that, you know, someone... All they wanted was a button, you know, or all they wanted was, you know, someone to call them princess or pirate or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it really, those are the memories that really stick out in my mind. And what would you say to somebody that is maybe thinking about it? Or maybe they're on the fence and say, you know, I'm just not sure if the college program is for me. What kind of advice would you give somebody that's thinking about applying? Well, and I've definitely had those conversations with students. A lot of times it's the older students who are afraid, oh, I'm too old, or, you know, maybe I just graduated. I Should I come down here if I just graduated? And I definitely can relate to those students. Um, I'd say whatever you do, it's whatever you make the most of it, you can take away from that program. You know, if you come down here with the right attitude, come down here thinking I'm here to have fun, I'm here to learn, I'm here to meet new people, maybe do some networking and, you know, really get to – meet leaders in an area, a career field that I want to go into, kind of foresee what what this can do for your career. Um, if you come down with the right mentality, then I guarantee you're going to have a good time. Um, you know, it's it's just a, it's set up for students to come down here and, and succeed and have a good time. And with the right attitude, I really, that's my only advice. I mean, I really do think that you can make it work. And it definitely sounds like what we were talking about before is it really is a life-changing experience. It really is. I mean, a lot of students, this is their first time away from home. It's their first time to kind of be out there on their own. Their mom's not doing their laundry. Their mom's not cooking for them. All of a sudden, they are doing all of that. And so for a lot of students, I can see the transformation. I can see that, wow, this really had an impact. And they come back. They come back and do a professional internship, or they move down here permanently. They finish school down here, and they work for the company full time. Um, so, I mean, I think there is something to be said about, you know, the college program and how it does change you. And like I said before, with the right attitude, I think it really is proven you will succeed. Excellent. Catherine Farmer, thanks so much for taking your, the you. time to talk to us and tell us about your personal experience and congratulations on completing the program and good luck in your internship. Thank you very much.
So July really seems to be, for me, the month for announcements with my new audio guide, the Adventureland Challenge contests, and all kinds of different things that are happening. And it's really been very exciting for me. Hopefully, it's been exciting for you as well. But wait, there's more. Because there's another announcement that I've been saving for this week's show, and it's time to let yet another cat out of the bag. But I cannot do it alone, so I wanted to bring in the person who really was the driving and creative force behind this new thing. And you know him as Top 10 Tim, or just Tim Foster from GuideToTheMagic.com. How you doing, Lou? Also, you may also know him as Samantha Brown from the Top 10 list. You know, (laughs) (laughs) it gets better and better. But, Tim, you and I have been talking about this and working on something together for the past few months, really almost coming up probably on a year um, Mm -hmm. since we first sat down to talk about it. And it's something that I know we're both very excited about introducing people to and telling people about. And it's also been very tough kind of keeping this under under wraps and under our hats for a while. Right. Uh, Well, if I can go ahead, what we're talking about is a new magazine that we're going to be coming out with. And it's going to be called Celebrations. And it's a magazine that's going to be devoted to discovering the magic of Walt Disney World. And the fun that we're having with this is it's not just Walt Disney World in terms of the Magic Kingdom and Epcot, Uh, although the magazine will, of course, largely focus on those. We're going to celebrate all things Disney. You will find uh, all the Disney parks, of course, all the news from Disney, upcoming events. We'll talk about Disney history, uh, Disney films, past and present. And it's it's a magazine we're looking to load up with all sorts of fun things. We're going to spotlight attractions, resorts, uh, moments from the past, like attractions from yesterday that we all remember fondly. And uh, there'll be fun and games and scavenger hunts and far more than I can even talk about. But as I said, it's a celebration of Disney for fans of Disney. It'll let you relive that magic 365 days a year when you're not at the parks. It's our attempt to bring that magic to you as often as we can. And really excited about it. Yeah, and it's not just Tim and I who are bringing this to you. Part of what we're excited about for the magazine, and hopefully you will be as well, is that the magazine is going to include columns and articles and features by people that you know and the people who are the very best at what they do. And you'll get hidden Mickeys and hassle-free planning from Steve Barrett. You'll get luxury articles from Kara Goldsberry. Mouse Fan Travel and Becky Mankin will write articles about traveling to Disney, saving money, tips and tricks, and ways to really enhance your vacation. And that's what we and these people are going to bring to you in each and every issue. Yeah, and we're also striving to make not only an informative magazine, but a, a beautiful magazine. And, and the look of the magazine is going to evoke all of the magic of Walt Disney World and the Magic Kingdom and Epcot and so forth. And uh, part of what we're going to bring, of course, is lots of wonderful pictures, uh, photographs from all, all over the parks. And uh, Tim Devine of the Magic and Pixels is actually going to help out very much with that. He will, of course, have his own column as well and talk about not only uh, tips about photography, but contribute lots of wonderful photographs and so forth. So it's, it's a magazine that it, it's going to have a lot in it. it. We hope it will look beautiful and hope everybody will enjoy it and get the magic out of it that we intend to put into it. Yeah, we have a lot of plans for the future and articles and guest columnists and things that we're going to highlight and bring to the magazine that I really, really think you guys are going to enjoy. Yeah, and the, and the main objective here is that it's a it's a magazine for Disney fans. It's not it's not just a travel destination magazine. It's going to be much more than that for fans of the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney and all of those things. Uh, and right now we're act, we're looking for our first issue to come out in September or thereabouts if all goes well. And in the meantime, uh, you can check out details of the magazine, including uh, things we're thinking of, things that we'll be including in the first few issues, as well as some introductory subscription offers that will be coming your way. And the the website for the magazine itself 
is celebrationspress.com. And you can also uh, find links to it at guidetothemagic.com, of course, as well as... WDWradio.com. There you go. So, uh, again, check it out. Uh, Come back frequently. We'll be adding more and more as the months roll on, all leading up to the grand release of the first issue, as I said, in September of 2008. Yeah, and we're also going to put up on the website a mock-up of what the first cover is going to look like so you can get an idea of what the uh, ec- the covers are going to look like and what a little bit of what the interior is going to look like. And, of course, I have to give big credit and big thanks to Tim for doing that. And if you've ever seen Tim's site and if you've ever seen Tim's book, you know when I'm not, you know, I have to flatter you a little bit since <laughs> I call you Samantha Brown. But uh, you, you are incredibly gifted at what you do. And, and I, as a fan, am looking forward to seeing the magazine. So uh, this is why we're so excited um, and we're really looking forward to it. Again, the website is celebrationspress.com. We'll put links up everywhere in the forums, in the show notes, and obviously over at guide to the magic.com. And uh, by all means, please give us your feedback. Let us know what you think about the idea. Let us know what you may like to see in the magazine. And uh, we look forward to giving you more information as we get closer to when we'll start taking subscriptions, taking orders, whatnot, and when the official release date for the first issue will be out. Yeah, and the other thing, too, just to add in there on the website, going forward in the magazine, we'll have reader photos and, and, and stories and things that people will be contributing. So look for that, too. You'll have an opportunity to send in your funny stories, funny photos, and perhaps we'll put them in and you can see yourself in the magazine. And that'll help to add a lot of the fun to it as well. Absolutely. Like everything that we do, Tim, we always want it to be interactive. So uh, this is just another opportunity. And uh, like I said, I- I'm really excited, really looking forward to getting this kicked off. Tim, thank you again. Remember, the website is celebrationspress.com, and it's Celebrations Magazine. Look for it coming soon. Thank you for tuning in again this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks again to my guests, Christy Breen, Catherine Farmer, and Tim Foster for joining me this week. Don't forget that the Adventureland Challenge Contest is set to begin on Monday, July 21st at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can visit WDWRadio.com for more information. Don't forget, tell your friends, tell your family how they can play too. And if they win, just make sure that they promise to take you. Don't forget that even if you don't win the grand prize, there are tons of great prizes to win, like Disney gift cards, iPods, park tickets, incentive smart sponsors, and of course, the big winner gets the VIP prize and package to Walt Disney World. I want to say thanks again to my sponsors, Mouse Fan Travel, All Star Vacation Homes, and HiddenMickey'sGuide.com for their help in sponsoring the contest. Again, you can visit WDWRadio.com for more information. And as long as you're in the Adventureland spirit, don't forget you can also purchase the Adventureland Audio Guide to Walt Disney World either as an instantly downloadable file or on CD. The download is $7.99. The CD is $9.99. The CD should be shipping later on this week. You can visit the show notes page for a link or head on over to DisneyWorldTrivia.com and click on the shop link over there. Also, speaking of magazines this week, head on over to AttractionsMagazine.com Pick up the latest copy of Orlando Attractions Magazine. More than just what you can find at Walt Disney World, it covers all the Orlando area theme parks, shows, restaurants, and more. That's from Ricky Briganti over at Inside the Magic. For more information to subscribe or check out an issue, go ahead and visit attractionsmagazine.com. To send a question, comment, show suggestion, just about anything else you'd like, you can email me at lou at wdwradio.com, or you can call the voicemail, be on the air at 206 202-4WDW. That's 206-202-4939. I promise to get to more of your emails in the coming weeks, and of course, stay tuned to the end of the show to hear some of your voicemails. On upcoming shows, I have more roundtable discussions set up, the last of the seven wonders of Walt Disney World, more DSIs with Jeff, top tens with Tim, and an exclusive interview that I just conducted that I think you are really, really going to enjoy, so stay tuned for that. To comment on or talk about the show with other listeners, visit the WDW Radio Show message forums over at DisneyWorldTrivia.com. If you are on Facebook, I now have a page and group set up there. You can find links to those in this week's show notes. 
And if you're excited about the Adventureland Challenge, please help spread the word. Let others know about it. Tell them how they can play and how you can all help decide who the winner's going to be. I hope you have a great week. Thanks again for tuning in. See ya. Hey, Lou. It's Darren Whitco from Middlebury, Connecticut. I just got through listening to your show, uh, The Top Ten Smells of Disney World. And no, you're not alone. The, uh, the, uh, the smells from the water attractions, uh, something that I've picked up on. And uh, something I've even noticed uh, at our local mall, if you stand near the fountain, you get that same uh, indoor water smell. So um, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, that there's others uh, out there that uh, feel the way you do. Um, also, one thing I, I wanted to mention when I was listening to the show, I thought of, as far as smells, the uh, Polynesian, when you walk into the, uh, the Great Ceremonial House, that has that a very distinct smell, uh, similar to what you'd get on Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, but it just brings back a lot of memories uh, when I walk in there, get that, that indoor water and that foliage smell. Uh, the monorail, I, I was so glad you mentioned that because that, that does have that very distinctive, almost mildew smell that, um, that, that, uh, that comes across. And it's, uh, to me, it's, it's almost like uh, the, maybe the air conditioner is working a little too hard and that condensation builds up and, and, uh, on the inside and, and leaves that smell. Uh, almost like a, a mild mildew smell, but very distinctive to the monorail. And uh, the other thing I was thinking, it's not a smell, but I was thinking of the lighting uh, at Disney World, and uh, specifically Pirates of the Caribbean in the, in the queue, there's that dim, that very dim lighting, that yellow uh, lighting, and it's, uh, it's something I remember as a kid. I used to try to simulate that at my parents' house with the dimmer switch in the hallway. I used to try to dim the light the overhead light in the, in the hallway uh, to get the lighting just right so it looked like the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. And, uh, of course, nobody was interested in that other than me, but but uh, I just wanted to let you know you're not alone in your thoughts, and, and uh, people listening either either know what we're talking about or or they think there's uh, some place that we need to be kept. I don't know. But, uh, but thanks for the great show, and that was a great segment. Talk to you later. Bye. Hi, Lou. This is Ellen from Connecticut. I just finished listening to this week's podcast, and I just had to call and tell you that I'm right there with you with the musty water smell. I'm at work, but I just had to take a minute to call and support you on this. We have a casino here in Connecticut with a big waterfall out in an open area, or maybe if you go into a mall or a hotel with a fountain and you smell that kind of chlorinated musty water smell, it takes me right back. I have to sigh, and I wish I was in WDW, which I will be in 42 days. That smell would definitely be on my list, and I'll think of you when I'm riding in Pirates and, and smelling the musty water smell. Keep up the good work. I really enjoy the podcast. Hey, Lou. This is Gorlin from Birmingham. I just had a comment about the uh, the most recent episode you did on the top ten smells of Walt Disney World. I fully agree with you on the uh, musty water smell in Pirates of the Caribbean. I know that smell, and, and I like it too. One of my favorite smells, and I'm sorry that I didn't hear on your top ten list, is uh, the cinnamon bell in the uh, Disney Days of Christmas store at Downtown Disney. That was one of the first places my wife and I went on our honeymoon, and uh, when I smell that smell, I'm always transported back to Disney World. Thanks, Lou. Love your show. Keep up the good work. Hey, Lou. My name is Larry. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I totally know what you're talking about, about smells of the water on some of the water rides in the Magic Kingdom. Um, I noticed it especially in Splash Mountain. You go up that first lift and the kind of the, the, the splash of the water is kind of going as you're going up the first lift and you, you, you feel the splash and you kind of smell. I, I know exactly what you're talking about because that smell of that water is different, I think, than any water smell that I've ever, if you can say that water has a smell, but some water actually does. But I think that water in Disney World in the in the Magic Kingdom has a very specific, recognizable scent that you just don't get anywhere else. But I just wanted to call in and tell you I know exactly what you're talking about because I totally experience it. We don't our water in Dallas doesn't smell like that. So anyway, just wanted to let you know. Thanks. Hey, Lou, it's Corey from New Orleans again. Uh, Monday morning, driving in the car, put on the, um, your podcast, and when, in the intro, when I hear y'all are going to be doing a top ten best smells of all Disney World, the only thing I could think 
is they better mention the musty water smell and the Pirates of the Caribbean rides. And to me, it's the only place in the world where you can smell that smell. Um, <laughs> if if I could smell it elsewhere, it would bring me straight to Disney World uh, by smelling it. It's not just a chlorinated smell. It's it's something else in it. I don't know what it is. Um, I back you up 100 million percent. Um, you smell it on Pirates. You smell it on Small World. But I think on the land and on Splash Mountain, you even smell it more because with the humidity, it, like, traps the smell in the ride, and it's stronger. <laughs> um, also, you know, talking about the hickory smell in the uh, Rome scene of, of Spaceship Earth, um, you also smell that smell strong on Kali River Rapids. And I, somehow, they I don't know how they get it there, but you smell it at the Animal Kingdom Lodge as well, uh, all around the resort. And any time I'm driving around uh, my neighborhood at home, if I go past certain restaurants, I can smell that hickory smell in the, from the kitchen, and it brings me straight back to Walt Disney World. So I'm so glad you mentioned the chlorinated water smell in, in the pirate ride, and uh, I love that top ten list. So keep up the good work. I love the podcast. Bye. Hey, this is Roman from California. Since I am a Disneyland type of person, um, I just listened to your show about smells. I would have to um, go with you on the Pirates of the Caribbean smell. That water smell for the same for out in California is just there. Same for it's a small world. I always get that too. But one you guys didn't say was dinosaur, which um, the smell of just being in the ride and in, like, right before you get into the cars. It's the same for Indiana Jones out here in Disneyland. And that smell I get occasionally in, like, random department stores. And let's just say I love that smell to death. And um, so you guys didn't mention that, but that's one of my favorite smells ever. So, yeah, just want to comment on that. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, Lou, I just wanted to, I was listening to your show, and I was listening to the top 10 smells and I heard you guys talking about the um, candy store. Now a cool thing about the candy store is that the smells that you smell are actually pumped into the candy store. There is the few smells from the fudge and the chocolate that they're making there but the uh, super sweet sticky smell is actually pumped in there. It's also the smell that's used um, in Phil Her Magic and also the exact same smell that comes out of the goofy float in the Christmas parade. Um, just a fun little fact. Great show. Talk to you soon, I'm sure. Goodbye. Bye, Dad! Bye, son. <laughs>